welcome to a master combination padlock that was sent to me by pikmi1977 a long long time ago so buddy thank you very much for sending this lock to me it's a really interesting one um, it's model 175 and there is a letter code stamped in a b d c d maybe um, if anyone knows what that means maybe that's a date code so please let me know um, what we're going to do with this lock for that video is I will show you the very well-known security flaw. Um, you can open this lock or these kind of locks uh, with a very thin knife um, without knowing the combination. Uh, I will show you that quickly, but then um, we will look inside. And I've already taken this lock apart. <laughs> you can see I've um, had some trouble getting out the pin. Um, yeah, I already uh, took this lock apart, uh, cleaned um, up the parts and uh, reassembled it and uh, I used the screw instead of the pin um, so I can take it apart whenever I want. So we will take it apart and look at the inside, we will inspect the guts and learn how this lock works. Yeah, so let me uh, show you the security flaw that is common to all of these locks. So currently it's locked up, um, 0, 0, 0 would be the uh, right code. I can show you this uh, quickly. So if you have selected the right code, you have, uh, you have to actually push in the shackle and then the shackle comes out and uh, the lock opens. So let's change the code again. So currently it's locked up. Um, what you have to do um, to get this lock open without knowing the code, you have to insert this knife uh, between the first and the second, or at the left side of the uh, second wheel. And then you have to lift a lever, which is uh, underneath this, this cover. But you also have to release pressure from this lever by pushing in the, um, the shackle. Now I've lifted the lever and the lock opens. So you can see it's still the wrong code, but the lock is open and now I can close it and it's again locked up. So that was that, but now let's open it up. So that's the screw which holds the shackle in place and also um, holds the um, inside part and the housing together. So now I can pull out the... Ah, I have to select the right code of course to be able to pull out the shackle. Yeah, this lock has suffered a little bit from my opening attempts. You can see the wheels turn while turning other wheels. I think now it should be fine. Yeah. Now the shackle comes out and we can remove it completely because the pin, or in this case the screw, is out. So um, at this part the pin would um, uh, prevent the shackle from coming out all the way. And that's also the distance the uh, shackle can go in and out while um, opening or locking up uh, or closing the lock. So that's the shackle. Put this to the side. Um, now we can pull out the inside. Um, so that's the that's the cover or the housing. Nothing really special uh, on this part. Uh, that's the hole for the for the key. Um, that's the key, the change key. You put it in, turn it, and then you can uh, change the code. Um, so I will put the cover also to the side. Yeah, here is the inside. Um, what we see here on the front or on the top um, are the two locking uh, poles, or locking bolts, um, which hold the shackle in place when they are um, pushed um, left and right out of the... Um, just a second, I want to fix this spring here. So 
All right, back in business. So um, when the these two uh, bolts um, are pushed left and right um, to to cover these these holes, and they are pushed in the uh, cutouts on the shackle, then the lock is locked up, and you cannot um, you cannot pull on the shackle usually when the lock is locked up because this uh, piece here. Uh, sticks in. So when I change the, the coat, you can see this, this piece here is in the way and these two bolts cannot uh, be pushed together. So that's why the lock is locked up. Um, and when you enter the right coat, this lever or this, this piece here uh, retracts and then these two um, locking bolts, locking poles can uh, be pushed together. Uh, by the pulling motion of the shackle and then the lock can open. So these are just two pieces of brass, I believe, connected with a spring and a little um, rod here. So I also put this to the side. And now we can look at the um, at the remaining part. Um, here is a... oh, that's a little piece here. Um, spring-loaded um, spring loaded T's or arms that push against the wheels um, and this cause the wheels to make these, these clicks so you can turn it but you feel um, a click at every whole number so the wheel doesn't want to stay in between two numbers that's the purpose of this little uh, piece here. I put this to the side as well. Uh, yeah, and we have the shackle spring that came out of uh, this chamber here, the chamber with the pin. Also put this to the side and now I will remove the uh, this cover here and we can finally uh, look to the inside, look at the heart of this lock. Um, I will come to this just in a second, why this is there. But first I want to show you how it actually works to, um, to open this lock up with a, um, with a thin knife like this. So what you do is, um, you wanna, what, what you actually want to do is you want to get this piece here out of the way so that the two bolts here can be pushed together. And of course, uh, when the wrong code is entered, these uh, prongs um, cannot be pushed down. But you can see there is a spring in the middle. Uh, it has an anchor point here on the other side, so um, it's under tension. Um, and when you have entered the right code, these, uh, these fingers here can uh, retract or can go down uh, from, from your point of view and then this, this piece here comes up and makes the room free for the bolts. But if you insert your uh, knife, you can lift the lever like this. You're actually pulling against the spring tension. You can see. Of course, you cannot cause these arms here to go down uh, from your point of view, but there is enough room that you can just lift this piece here up against the, the spring tension here. So now how, the, how does, um, does it work with the wheels? Um, we have uh, inner and outer wheels and I'm going to adjust the lightning so that we can look inside really close. and. These inner and outer wheels are connected with peaks, with little peaks. So here is series one, and they grab in the the wheels. There are little gaps, and everything is pushed together by a little spring. That's the little spring. So when I now simulate the cover by holding it tight with my finger. Come on. So now everything is pushed firmly together. I can now turn the, the wheel, the outer wheel, and you can see how the inner wheel 
turns along. And maybe you can see it, we have a, a little gate here and that's um, a security measure that you cannot change the code when the lock is in the uh, closed state. But the actual gate that we are looking for is this big flat portion on the inner wheel. So this flat portion needs to be aligned straight with these uh, fingers here, like so, and like so. It's hard to see through the camera lens. Like so, and like so. Yeah, you have seen. Now we are open. So that's that's the locked up state, and the, this piece here sticks in. And now, now we are in the open state, and here everything is free for the bolts to retract. Um, now, how does it work with the change key? Um, first of all, you cannot change the code uh, when the shackle is uh, in, so when the lock is locked up. And here you see the, the place for the change key to operate. And usually <laughs> you can see that the, um, this, this part here is covered by this end part here of the shackle, so you cannot stick in your uh, change key. But also if the shackle is out and you have entered the ro wrong code, you cannot uh, change the code because of these, these cutouts here. So they must be aligned like this because on the, on the other side here uh, we have sticking out little pieces of metal and you will now see when I use the change key that everything wants to move uh, now to the left and it cannot move to the left if this little cutout here on the inner wheel isn't aligned. So let's put in the change key. So currently the, the tooth on the key is pointing upwards. I, I put in the change key. You can see how the inner and the outer wheels separate and when I turn it it just stays in place uh, at this edge here. Now inner and outer wheel are separated and I can change the code on the um, outer wheels without um, changing anything on the inner wheels. And now when I release the, uh, the pressure, when I remove the change key, um, I have to push in the spring firmly. It's um, all connected again and we have entered the wrong ad, <laughs> the new code. So when I simulate um, a different code here, um, and let's assume the shackle is still out, now when I try to insert the change key, I cannot stick it in because this cutout here, this gap on the, on the inner wheel is not aligned with this piece here inside the lock and um, you cannot push everything uh, against the spring tension. Pretty cool mechanism actually, beside of the fact that uh, it's very easily to defeat um, by just um, lifting the lever with a very thin uh, knife. Yeah, so that's basically it. Um, I hope you found this interesting. I was really curious to see how this actually works and beside of my unskilled attempt to get this um, to get this uh, pin out, I'm pretty happy with the result because now I have a, um, a master combination padlock that I can um, assemble and uh, disassemble and reassemble and play with it and it still actually works pretty well. Yeah, so that's it. Um, thank you very much for watching, happy picking and bye bye!